serious resource concern uh, that we are throwing silver away in landfills, uh, which will never be recovered. Uh, the only major recycling in silver, as you know, is, is the photographic uh, process. But everything else, there's silver in your cell phone battery or in your computer uh, or any electronics, it gets thrown away in, in a landfill and it will never be recovered. So the suppression of precious metals prices makes it uneconomic to recycle silver. Um, now, there needs to be a price, uh, a free market price of silver, where we will recycle almost every gram of it, uh, so, as we do with gold. But we're a long way from that price in silver. Uh, so the longer this goes on, the more we get closer to running out of silver in terms of an of a, a, uh, element of the periodic table that's available for us to mine. So I think at, uh, at some stage, the price of silver could well be higher than the price of gold uh, because of that reason. A complete disconnect between the ability of supply to meet demand. Yes, because it's got to reach a price where it is economic to recycle every gram of it. Um, because if it's not, then we will run out of it. Uh, if we re rely on fresh supply uh, rather than recycle supply, uh, we, will, we will run out. Um, so, so that that is was my the, the you know the umbrella I was trying to ring with that comment is this is not like gold you know every ounce of gold ever been mined in human history is pretty much still around somewhere on the planet, uh, and the uh, someone used the very graphic description that it would fill about two Olympic sized swimming pool which really puts it into perspective how small the real physical gold. Uh, that exists on the planet is. Uh, it's not a large volume. Um, but, um, you know, s silver, uh, you know, we are, we are consuming it, we're, we're running out of it, and we, we need to be able to recycle every gram of it like we do with gold. In other words, to put it in more economic terms, because silver is so grossly underpriced, it is being grossly overconsumed. Yes, and... There is no substitute for silver, as you probably know. There are things that it does for us uh, that cannot be substituted by anything else. Uh, so it's, it's essential for all our electronics, for things like uh, um, these RFIDs, for a lot of the medical applications. Uh, gold, at uh, the limit, we could, we could have it all disappear from the planet and we, life would probably still go on. Um, there's not very much gold used in industrial processes. Uh, silver is absolutely fundamentally essential to modern life on, on, on Earth. Uh, so it's not something that we can deplete and say, well, it doesn't really matter. Uh, we can use something else. We can't. Now, when we had a recent opportunity to do a written interview with Ted Butler, he said that once the bullion manipulation had been completely exposed, that he might start to focus his own work on when it would be finally time to sell silver at some major multiple of current prices. And you know, when you talk about supply and demand and compared gold and silver, you mentioned how you stress how virtually all gold is recycled while most silver is not. Well, we know that silver has finally reached a top when we see silver recycled to the same degree as gold. Well, I think if the markets weren't interfered with, uh, there wouldn't really be a time where you would want to sell gold and silver, except uh, because you want to buy something. Uh, you know, if you want to buy a boat or a house, then you might sell some of your gold and silver to get some fiat currency to go and go and buy it. Um, but if the you know the markets aren't interfered with, fiat currency should always be depreciating unless. Uh, governments suddenly get a large dose of discipline and make the currency they issue in short supply. And if they were to issue it uh, in a scarcer supply than precious metals, then free market forces would say that fiat currency would appreciate with respect to precious metals. Um, but I think we'd be dreaming if we ever thought that governments would, would have that sort of discipline. Uh, that's why they have fiat currencies in the first place rather than uh, commodity-backed currencies because they can produce out of thin air. So, you know, real assets over uh, time always appreciate in a, in a free market with respect to fiat currency. Um, you know, I don't think most people say, well, you know, I've got to have a look at the right time to sell my house. Uh, you know, you tend to think bricks and mortar 
is a long-term investment and it will keep appreciating. Now, obviously, there are times like the last couple of years where uh, real estate has taken a big nosedive. Um, but in 5, 10, 20 years' time, you look back and this will be a small blip. And the, uh, the, the uh, price of real estate and, and uh, property will be keeping track with inflation. Uh, so I'm not convinced that there will be a time when it will be desperately important to to uh, to sell all your precious metals. Uh, there might be some more attractive investments that might appreciate faster, uh, but I really don't see the collapse of the precious metal unless the markets are interfered with. Now that happened in uh, 1980 when Volcker increased interest rates of 20%. Uh, but you know you can argue that that was uh, market intervention uh, that was deliberately designed to stop the precious metals bull and to stop the depreciation of the dollar. Uh, so unless there's something uh, that is uh, a, a, a large quantum change, uh, I think uh, precious metals should remain a store of wealth like they've always been over 6,000 years of history. So in other words, you're not seeing any top in this market, just eventually reaching an equilibrium point where it reaches a fair market value and there's not this rampant rigging of the market. Yeah, well, I think there will be a spike. Uh, you know, what we spoke about earlier when uh, you've only got uh, a small amount of metal and you've got a hundred times more uh, claims on it uh, than you've actually got metal, then, you know, there will be a, a spike in prices. Uh, there will be a lot of the general public coming in to buy it. So, you know, there, there will be a spike. Um, but that, I think, will, will dissipate and you'll still have metals at very high levels compared to the art today. Uh, so I think for the market timer, yes, there's, there's some money to be made uh, by, by timing that and, 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 and trying to take advantage of it. But for the person who doesn't, uh, I don't think there'll be losers. It's, it's not like, I don't, I don't envisage it like the NASDAQ bubble where, uh, you know, if you hadn't sold at the top, your stocks drop to a level lower than where you bought them. Uh, I think the scarcity that's going to be evident in the precious metals market uh, will make it such that, that that sort of collapse is not possible. Uh, the supply, there'd have to be an oversupply uh, of very large proportions or demand to suddenly fall off for that to happen, which is what happened in the, in the NASDAQ bust. But if we're talking about something which is only 1% of what it should be, uh, I can't see how you could get a collapse. Uh, well, we uh, greatly appreciate the time you've been able to devote to this interview, and I'm sure our audience is much better informed than they were a half an hour ago. So on behalf of our audience, we'd like to thank you very much for appearing. Do you have any last uh, words of wisdom for our audience? Uh, I think um, what I've said about... Um, uh, investors doing their due diligence is very important. Uh, I think what we haven't touched on, and uh, perhaps some of you're interested, are, uh, int uh, your uh, listeners are interested in, is mining shares. And you know, the there is a, a notion that uh, uh, you know people will become rich by holding gold and silver, uh, and I think that's going to be true this time because of this massive shortage we've spoken about. Uh, traditionally, when the markets are not uh, intervened with, uh, gold and silver are a store of value. So they they preserve your wealth rather than making you more wealthy. Uh, that is going to be different this time, as we've already spoken about, that the prices will, will appreciate multiples of the current price. Um, but to have uh, leverage on that, uh, investors look to the mining stocks because if you look at some of the quality junior miners, uh, they are increasing their assets and doing exploration, increasing the amount of gold and silver that uh, they have as resources. So that means that not only will the price uh, of the stock appreciate because of the appreciation of the metals, but it appreciates because of the extra resources that they find. Uh, now that is not true with the seniors. Uh, there's uh, people that think that uh, some of the seniors will appreciate more than the metal. But I went back and looked at the 1970s, and although the senior mining companies did very well, uh, they did not outperform in general 
the appreciation of the metals. 